Being able to move into the RV before retirement means remote employment from wherever we are. Full-time RV living and other location independent lifestyles need a rock solid internet connection. The newest iPhone streaming TVs, laptops for kids road schooling, none of it's worth anything if you don't have a good connection. We're going to show you step by step how we installed the full-time RV internet access bundle from Mobile Must Have. Hey Roamers, I'm Jamie. I'm Linda. And this is Roaming with Rosie. Welcome back to our two-part series about the Full Timers Internet Bundle we purchased for our location independent lifestyle. In part one, we went over what's included, what we added, and how much we paid for it. There's a link in the description below for that episode if you haven't seen it yet or if you just want to do a quick, quick review. As well as a discount code that can save you some cash. Look, we get it, this is not the cheapest way to have mobile internet and internet access. But it's a humongous leap above in terms of reliability and trouble-free connections. There's only so much your internet or your cell service can do if you don't have the equipment to grab that signal and bring it into your mobile office. And for us, that signal is the key to having a location independent life. It's 115 degrees today here in Arizona. And we're ready to get the heck out of here. So let's get this installed. So now that I got my hole through, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and mount the antenna on top of the roof. So I'm going to run my wire leads down through the hole and then I'm going to take that foam adhesive pad. Before I mount it, I'm going to clean that area really good so I get good adhesion. Um, I'm going to put the, put the pad down and then mount the antenna on top of that. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to run a bead of die core around the edge of the antenna just for precaution so we don't get any water leaks. That's the last thing you want is any water protruding into the roof and doing any damage. So that's what I'm one of the things I'm going to be doing once I get the antenna set. <laughs> I'm going to use this as a wire to pull my uh, antenna wires through the hole. So on the other side of this, which is on top of the roof, I'm going to tape all of my leads to this wire. And then I'll be able to pull this wire through the hole and it'll help pull the wires through that, uh, the wire leads through that hole. One thing with those wire leads, each line had was a color coded uh, piece of tape that was marked to tell you what kind of lead it was, whether it was cellular or Wi-Fi. So we want to make sure we don't destroy those because otherwise we won't know what lead is what lead. So we want to make sure and preserve those little tabs. So now I have my line pull through, um, preserved all of my little tabs here so I know where each one of those goes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up on the roof. Now that I've got my wires ran and I've cleaned uh, the roof here where I'm going to be adhering my antenna to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the one side, stick it to the antenna, and then once I have that on there, I'll pull the opposite side, stick it down on the roof where I want it to be. One thing that they did include, if you're not using the magnets for mounting your uh, antenna, they have these inserts uh, to complete that whole area. So that's just a little extra um, for adhesion and helping you keep it in place. So I'm going to first mount this and then I'm going to take these and put those in there as well. Get that all mounted on the antenna here and then I'm going to pull the opposite side and stick it down on the roof. Mm -hmm. 
and again, like I said, it's omnidirectional, so it doesn't matter which way uh, you place the antenna. I'm placing it in this direction because that way there's less wind resistance against it. So, so I'm going to go inside now and I'm going to start working on uh, installing the PEP wave. Uh, I'm going to come back once I'm done with that and then run my beaded die core around. So that connection I was showing you, the green one where I unscrewed it, that's to make it if you just want to be able to unplug it. And you can actually take the router with you if you wanted to. So if you wanted to go say in a hotel or whatever, you could use it in a hotel. The other thing, they have the little screws on top here. Um, that's for when you put your wire in there. So you're going to put the wire in here. Um, and then you take your screwdriver. And you just tighten down on it. And you're good to go. What I'm doing now is I'm going to be uh, connecting the antenna Wi-Fi leads. And also the cellular leads. And as you can see here, there's a... It says Wi-Fi antenna A, Wi-Fi antenna B. It doesn't matter which one on here that you hook up to A or B, they're both the same. And as you can see on here, uh, the green ones say Wi-Fi and then the purple ones say LTE. So that's your uh, cellular connections. When you purchase your bundle, in the antenna, your five-in-one uh, pointing antenna, the, the omnidirectional one that I just mounted on the roof, in the bag that comes with all the screws and things of that nature, there's these two adapters for your um, to go to your router. On your router, if you notice, um, it's a male end right here. So what we need to do is we need to take these adapters and screw them onto the leads coming from your antenna so that it will connect to the router. So we want to make sure when you open your bag not to lose these because they're very important. You can buy them off uh, Mobile Must Have's website, but why buy them when they already come with your uh, antenna? And you only need two. You only need them for the Wi-Fi side of the router. So the Wi-Fi, like I said, is the green wires, and it doesn't matter which one goes to which, because they're the same. And then this one here on the opposite side. This is your uh, GPS, the locator thing that I was talking about. I'm not going to hook that up right now. I'm going to do now. I'm going to do my cellular side. So now the, pur the purple side is your cell cellular side, so I'm going to go ahead and get that uh, screwed in as well, so we have that all set up. It's a little bit of a stretch, but it is doable. And we got that one. And then while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and hook up my, my GPS line, so I'm gonna, and that's where this goes. You can see here it says GPS right here on the router. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, connect it and then I can, if I decide I want to use it, I can go into the administra administrative page on the website and decide whether I want it on or off. So that's all wired up. The only other thing I need to do is run my 12 volt line. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and then what I'm going to do here, it has mounting holes so you can screw this down and mount it permanently. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to run a couple of strips of Velcro here so that way I'll be able to pull it loose and change out my SIM cards and all that kind of stuff so I have access so I'm not having to constantly unscrew it and screw it. So that's what I think I'm going to do. Now that I got all of my antenna leads wired up, I'm going to wire up my 12 volt so I can power up the router. I already had these connections so I'm just going to go ahead and use those. And just to give you a heads up, make sure everything's shut off while you're doing this. So you don't want to cause any issues blowing your fuses. So that should all be good. I'm going to go ahead, uh, because I got this long, long run here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, roll that up real nicely, uh, put a zip tie around it, and then put that back in here. So what I've done is I uh, took my antenna line and kind of wrapped it up and then zip tied it to clean it up a little bit. Did the same thing with that 12 volt line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my fuse panel uh, cover back on here and that just basically pops on like so. 
and then I still have to put my my shelf back in here one thing that I did do is I, I drilled a clearance for my antenna lines so that that way the shelf can sit in there so I'm gonna go ahead and get the shelf put back up in there and then this aspect of the install will all be completed I have not gotten my sim cards yet but I wanted to get this all installed because uh, we're getting ready to head out here in the next couple of weeks and uh, in another couple of weeks it's going to be 10 degrees hotter than what it is now and it's already 100 degrees so so I'm going to get my shelf put back in here close this up and then I'm going to go to figuring out where I want to put my the extension pole on the outside of the RV So what I'm doing now is I'm working on the extension pole. I've determined where I want it and the reason why I'm putting it up front here is because where I installed my router, which is right up in this cabinet up here above the driver's seat, um, what I'll be able to do is once I have my antenna hooked on the top of this pole, the wires will be able to come down and I can either run them through this window here or through the side of the slide right here. So that works for a really good uh, short run on my wires and I want to keep those wires uh, runs as short as possible. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be doing my mounts for these brackets here. Um, as you can tell I got one here and then I did one up there. It's probably about a six foot spread. The reason why I did that is because that way it'll make my pole, the closer they are the less sturdy it is. So I spread it out as far as I could. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be cleaning this, putting my mounting brackets on. And then the other thing I wanted to show you here is down here the uh, base. And like I said, I just put this on to the bottom of the pole and then it sits on the ground and then it has these holes where you can stake it once you've set up in your, in your campsite. That'll help with it being a lot more sturdy. Um, what I'm doing, you don't necessarily have to do this. You can eyeball it. Um, coming from a construction background, being a carpenter, if I see this and it's not level, it would <laughs> drive me crazy. So that's just kind of my thing. You can eyeball this. It doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly straight. But what I'm doing is I'm marking the side here so I know where, where it's level and then also where I want my bracket to be. So I'm going to do that on the top and also down here. I'm going to put a little line so I know where my I want my brackets to be set at. Next step is I'm going to clean around that area and then I'm going to put my uh, brackets on there and then we'll see how it how everything is looking. So I'm just pulling this uh, backing off and then I'm just going to stick it here. I got the brackets mounted, so I'm just going to show you how easy it is to take it on and off. Just lift up, take it off. You just stay on there permanently. If you need, if I'm going to need this, and my other antenna isn't working well enough, I'll just slide this out, extend it up, bring it in like that. I said it has this safety clip, so it can't for some reason just lift up. And that just there's a little hole in here in the bracket. It has a little uh, ball bearing, so you just get it past that ball bearing and it'll just stay put, just like so. And that way it can't lift up and take off on you. Next step in the process is we gotta mount our antenna onto the pole. So um, it comes with this bracket. See, the bracket kinda just sits on there like that. So we put that down first. On like that and then this goes over top of it like so and then you take your one of your bolts
and that just screws in like that. So we just put all four of those in and then we'll tighten them down. And then we just want to go ahead and tighten that down. Now what we do is it also came with this, it's kind of like a U-bolt. Uh, basically what that does is this is going to go on here like so. You put your U-bolt through there. If you see this is kind of cut out in a V-shape, that's so it'll accommodate the round pole. Go ahead and get that on there and then I'll put it on, slide the pole through it and then tighten it up. Just want to make sure I have enough to get over top of that pole there. Now I have that mounted on there, so if my other antenna on top of the roof isn't working, I'm not getting a good signal from that, I'll revert, uh, revert to this. has this line, uh, I believe it's 16 feet long, so that can go, like I said, either through the window on the driver's side are through one of the uh, moldings on the the uh, um, slide. I can slide it through the rubber there and then put this up into the cabinet. But then all I would need to do, just telescope it up as high as I want it to be and then put the antenna in the direction that I want it based off of the uh, app that I'm using to determine what's the best uh, tower to use. So that's basically the install. Um, like I said, I don't have the SIM card yet uh, because I wanted to get this done because it was starting to get hot out. Uh, once I have the SIM card, I'll let you know how, how well it's working and all that kind of stuff. So, but this is our arsenal as far as uh, having internet while we're out on the road, boondocking and all that sort of stuff. And like I said, I'm, there's links down in the description below for all of the uh, products that I purchased, uh, this telescoping uh, pole, and then also all of the components that I got from Mobile Must Have as far as the router and the other antenna. That's going to be our internet setup and that's going to be it for this video. Um, I hope this video was helpful and as always make sure and hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and make sure to leave a comment so you can be part of the conversation. Until next time, see ya.